to the Borough of Englewood Cliffs Mayor and Council regular meeting. Today is July 10th, 2019. It's 8 p.m. and I call the meeting to order. I'd like to have everybody stand. Uh, we always flag this, salute the flag at the beginning of our meetings. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you please have a roll call for us? Mayor Pandrak? Here. Council Persons Wood? Here. Song? Here. Safari? Here. Park? Here. Aversa? Here. Oh, here. Burr Attorney. Here. Municipal Clerk, uh, Superintendent of DPW. Here. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please read into the record the Open Public Meetings Act statement? Adequate notice of this meeting was given to the press and posted as required. Day and time of this meeting was legally given as required by the Open Public Meetings Act. This notice is on file with the municipal clerk and posted on the bulletin board. Minutes of this meeting will be made available to the public upon the completion of typing and proofing by the municipal clerk. Thank you. Uh, for anyone standing in the back, we have uh, quite a few chairs up here in the front. You're welcome to just come up. I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. It's a very important meeting. Uh, we have our regular business uh, to take care of, uh, but of course we also have the very important issue of uh, the Borough of Englewood Cliffs compliance with the Affordable Housing Law in the state of New Jersey uh, to discuss. Uh, just want to take care of a few uh, housekeeping issues first. Uh, for those who are new to our meeting, I welcome you. I wish you could come every month. Uh, we provide uh, some good information and um, good discussion as well, and we always welcome your questions. So if you can't be at our meetings, you're free to email me uh, with any questions that you may have. Uh, when you came in, you probably noticed there's a table out front. We have a community uh, service project where we collect food, non-perishable food items, for the Office of Concerned Food Pantry at St. Cecilia's Church in Englewood. Uh, we do it every month. Uh, we'll collect here tonight, and if you have anything that you want to donate in terms of food, uh, you can bring it to the police station in the morning. Uh, we, we try to help uh, people who are less fortunate uh, than us uh, in Bergen County. Uh, there's a lot of people who um, are basically working poor and, and we try to alleviate their condition. Uh, and the Office of Concern does a great job distributing that food. Uh, so and they're very appreciative and they thank us every month. I also want to take this moment and opportunity uh, to introduce you to our new police chief. Uh, chief William Henkelman is the 10th police chief of the Borough of Englewood Cliffs. We swore him in last month, at the end of the month, and uh, I just wanted him to come up, introduce himself, and perhaps say a few words. And I, I encourage everyone here, uh, the theme has been, you know, we're basically uh, turning over a, a new leaf, and uh, I want everyone uh, to support Chief Hankelman, uh, to the best of their ability, I certainly am, and will continue to do so. So welcome, Chief Hankelman. So many residents here, a uh, brief PSA on uh, protecting your vehicles. Please continue to lock your vehicles and keep your key fob in the house. Um, 
Four second clips is very safe, but from time to time we do have um, some people pass through that are looking uh, for some easy targets. So lock your vehicles, key fobs inside the house, please. And uh, finally, um, I know this is gonna be a, um, some passionate debate tonight. Um, I would just like to urge everyone to um, maintain calm, please be respectful, and um, if for any reason you have any interactions with the officers who are posted here, I ask you to be cooperative and uh, things will be explained to you outside. Um, other than that, I hope you uh, all enjoy tonight's uh, presentation. So for anyone standing in the back, there are chairs up here in the front and also in the middle. Feel free to just come up and, and sit down. We need to keep the, uh, the doorways clear. Um, so the purpose of tonight is to have our affordable housing professionals uh, give you a presentation uh, about affordable housing uh, and what this council is considering, and also give you an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, so again, thank you, uh, everyone, for being here at this very important meeting. And let, just let me begin uh, by saying, without a doubt, we are fortunate and blessed to live in the best country that ever existed in the history of mankind. Uh, America did not get to be the best by following any type of Western European form of socialism, or any form of socialism for that matter. Uh, it became this way by creating an environment to improve itself and have its citizens work hard and aspire to do better than those that came before. And, uh, I just want to quote, as President Reagan so clearly stated, government's main job is to protect people, not to run their lives. The New Jersey State Government, and now what I believe five of your six elected council members are looking to do is to run your life. I won't. The affordable housing laws, known as Mount Laurel, started in the mid-1970s. From 1976 through today, Anglewood Cliffs has not built a single unit of affordable housing. This failure of the, 40, of the former 40-year Democratic leadership is why we are in this precarious position we now find ourselves in. I have always said that I oppose any governmental taking of property, of value, or redistribution of property or income. However, I have also always said publicly that one, I believe in full compliance with all applicable laws, whether or not I agree with them. Those are the laws. And two, I believe in home rule, meaning that Anglewood Cliffs gets to solve its own problems and compliance with applicable laws such as the affordable housing scheme that's being thrust upon us. As you all know, the main focus of tonight's meeting is affordable housing, in the 800 Sylvan Avenue site, also known as the former Unilever site. To be clear, and I'll be intentionally repetitive, I never supported building any residential units at 800 Sylvan, and I never will. I've always told you that. Councilman Wu has remained consistent as well throughout with his votes and his views. It's important that you know where all your elected officials stand. And I just told you where I stand, again, without any qualification. Let's see if your other elected officials will do the same. Don't let them give you excuses for surrendering your town to high density development. You elected them to be your leaders. So force them to be leaders and not followers. Over the past several days, the controlling members of the Borough Council, Edna Versa, Deborah Severi, and other part, Jimmy Song, and Gloria O, finally decided to include you and me in their discussion and their plan for the Borough's affordable housing obligations. They picked the middle of July to do so, knowing and perhaps hoping that many of our neighbors would be away on vacation and would just simply miss this meeting. I am so happy to see so many of you here tonight. 
despite the efforts of your counsel, other than Councilman Wu, to hide their plans <coughs> from you. A plan which has been around since May. Since May. It's now the middle of July. And it's been around since they unlawfully signed a memorandum of understanding with the developer. I am also delighted to see the rapidly growing community engagement in fighting residential development at 800 Sylvan. Thank you everyone who's been doing that. Keep up the great work. Tonight we will hear from Jeffrey Serenian, our special affordable housing attorney. Now I hired Jeffrey last year and he helped me create a viable plan for affordable housing on Hudson Terrace. As bad politics go, the Democrats on council this year completely turned him against me and against your town. And he is now advocating for residential housing at 800 Sylvan. We will also hear from affordable housing planner Mike Mistretta, who's also sitting there, who also does whatever he is told by councilmen Council members of Ursa, O, and Sabari. Now, Normandy purchased the former Unilever campus, that's 800 Sylvan, and asked for a commercial subdivision and certified that purpose to our planning board under the penalties of perjury in 2017. Our planning board, under the leadership of Russell Perino, rightfully and lawfully denied Normandy the request to subdivide the property. Normandy then sued the town to obtain the right to build up to 835 residential units right after Normandy had just certified that it only wanted a commercial subdivision. Under applicable New Jersey law, such a residential project would require 20% of the residential units to be set aside as affordable housing. So a toxic, or what I call it, an unholy alliance was then created by a for-profit developer, Normandy, and a not-for-profit organization known as Fair, Fair Share Housing Council, Fair Share Housing Center, the New Jersey Courts, and the New Jersey Court Special Masters, whereby the developer asks for permission to build residential units on a commercially zoned property, like Unilever, and the Fair Share Housing Center, the New Jersey Courts, and the Court Special Master, along with the cottage industry of lawyers and planners, acquiesced to this land grab under the color of law. To sum it up, in New Jersey, and now in Englewood Cliffs, we have non-elected judges, non-elected special court masters, and a non-governmental, not-for-profit organization grabbing away your land and your value, and giving them to others under the cover of law. This, as I have stated in the past, and as the Star Ledger and Bergen Record have criticized me, is pure and simple socialism. It's been quite a drama dealing with this matter. During 2018, we followed, the 2018 Council followed to the letter of the law, everything our special counsel, Jeff Serenian, and special planner, Mike Mistretta, told us we had to do. We created a plan on Hudson Terrace to build only a 100% affordable housing project so as to not completely blow up our infrastructure and our schools. We would have built 57 units on Hudson Terrace under my plan and we would have received a credit for 20 more units, giving us 77 units. The 2018 council, and even this council in 2019, in January 2019, approved that plan. And in fact, one year ago, Fair Share Housing seemed inclined to accept that plan. What happened after January 2019 may forever remain a mystery. Why would this council abandon Councilman Wu's and my plan in favor of building high density housing at 800 Sylvan? Why would they do that? Permit me to give you some history on this matter. Mr. Serenian and Ms. Greta were challenged by me in the 2018 council all throughout 2018. We didn't make it easy for them, but we did come up with a plan. 
However, we also always included everyone on the council in the decisions, and we always obtained consensus. Indeed, all the votes were unanimous in 2018 on the affordable housing plan and our strategies. Those votes included some of our current council members, O. Aversa, Ellen Park, and, and William Wu. William Wu, Councilman Wu, is the only council member who has never changed his position, and I commend him for that. Then came 2019 with a Democratic council majority. At the reorganization meeting on January 3rd, I asked for a special meeting so that Mr. Serenian and Ms. Stretta could update the new council. Since January 3rd, I repeatedly offered to have the two people in town who have had the most knowledge and experience dealing with the affordable housing matters volunteer to update and assist the new Democratic Council majority. But that majority refused their help and their orderly transition. Those two people were Planning Board Chairman Russell Carino and former Council President Carol McMorrow, who I thank. They worked tirelessly to bring the borough into compliance with what I refer to as the Hudson Terrace Plan. On January 7, our special affordable housing attorney, Mr. Serenian, stood in front of our borough's planning board and all of you who were there and declared that my plan, the Hudson Terrace Plan, was good, was viable, and was reasonable. He also mentioned that we had the law on our side in case the court opined that we need more affordable housing units. In that case, Mr. Serenian made clear that the borough should be permitted to cure any shortfall on its own and not be subjected to the toxic alliance that I mentioned earlier. Council members of Ursa, Sabari, and O, Mr. Serenian, and Borough Acting Council Wunsch then excluded me from all meaningful discussions, and they decided without a valid explanation to completely change the approach to Angwood Cliffs' compliance with our affordable housing obligation by permitting Normandy to build residential units on the former Unilever site and scrap the plan that the Planning Board and Council had just recently adopted. So what changed? Why would Ed Aversa and the other Democrats on Council and Mr. Serenian and Ms. Dredda all completely change their strategy? Who would benefit? Why not fight for our right to solve our own affordable housing obligations? Why was I excluded from discussions and negotiations? I was always of the mind that we must fight this matter because not doing so would reduce all our home values by my estimate of at least 30%, require new school buildings, require upgrades to our sewers and other infrastructure, destroy a commercially zoned corporate campus where people can actually earn a living and forever make us a high tax town. Why would they do that? Now as an aside to shed light on what I've been through this year, I was told by Council President O, Councilman Aversa and Councilwoman Sabari, Borough Attorney Wunsch at the time, that I was excluded from discussions with Normandy because Normandy did not want me in the room. Well, of course Normandy did not want me in the room. I was the only person other than Councilman Wu telling Normandy that they cannot turn a commercial campus into a residential development. As mayor, and I thank you for making me mayor, I am the chief executive officer of this borough and I had every right to participate fully. I have asserted my rights in litigation against them and others in the tainted process that they have embarked on with Normandy, hoping to show their contemplated settlement for the sham that it is. Now this also brings a bigger issue to the forefront, and that is about leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, we on this dais, other than the borough clerk and the borough attorney, were elected to represent you and not to further any political party's agenda. Once we're up here, politics stop. We work for you. <laughs> Leadership is about doing what the people <laughs> elected you want to be done. It means standing up for your fellow citizens and getting knocked around if that's what it takes. Ladies and gentlemen, I have always stood up for you and I will continue to do so. And yes, I have been knocked around. And I'm still standing. Other than Councilman Wu, the others up here have caved in to whatever their political handlers wanted them to do at most important votes. 
Additionally, and this is the, 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 the big irony of the whole thing, is let's not forget that Councilman Savari lives within 200 feet of the Unilever Normandy property and is conflicted by applicable law from participating in any discussion regarding that property. And yet she continues her involvement. Read the ordinance. So what happens next? I expect the borough attorneys and planners under complete control of the Democratic majority on council will present a plan to you. They will tell you they have no other alternatives other than to build residential housing at 800 Silver. That's what they will tell you. They will tell you that fighting this in court is not worth the time and the expense. They will not listen to you. They will not listen to me. Then the next step will be for the council to vote. The Democrats on council are controlled by our state's Democrat and our local Democrat. That's right, the people who show up at your doors during election season to push for these misguided Democrats on council to be elected. It's the Germones, the Mike Marnuzzi's, the Nikau's, the Geigers of our town that trick you into voting for these people, and then they destroy your town with affordable housing. That's really Over $700,000 in lump sum retirement benefits to a disgraced police chief, and the list goes on. In fact, in fact Karen Geiger, who seeks nothing more than attention and followers, couldn't just do her usual manipulation when it comes to the affordable housing issue. Hey, instead, hey, instead, hey, instead, already. instead, what she does is, I mean, what is instead, what she actually does is, it's she a joins the lawsuit, now you're being stop, stop. she joins the lawsuit, not on the side of the borough, she joins on the side of the developer. Next time she shows up at your door, send her away. Next time you receive her and Sabari's eye in the cliffs, so-called newsletter, throw it away and all its lies. This council will most likely vote for residential housing at 800 Sylvan. If there is a tie, I get to vote. And I will vote against residential housing at 800 Sylvan. Remember, the developer and not-for-profit organization are only taking advantage of the environment created by our elected officials and the judges that made them available to them. Next time you cast a vote in any state, county or local election, consider what our misguided local elected officials have just done to this town and what others have done to this county and state. Also, don't forget that no matter what plan is adopted to satisfy our requirements, it only gives us until June 2025 before we have to do this all over again. That's how crazy this law works. Now, as a final fact point for you, and it's definitely worth mentioning, it's been reported that twice as many people moved out of New Jersey in 2018 as moved into it. The migration, the largest of any state, has dropped the Garden State's population to pre-2013 levels. That was reported in NorthJersey.com on January 5th, 2019. So other than increasing the wealth of developers and appeasing the fair share housing zealots, what good is accomplished by creating more high density housing when so many people are leaving New Jersey? Again, thank you for being here tonight and for participating in your democracy. Uh, I just ask the <laughs> chairs up front and in the middle for anyone standing, feel free to just come up. Uh, there's three here, two here. You don't have to stand back there. So the next part of our evening uh, is me turning over the microphone to our affordable housing um, dream team to give their presentation. But before I do that, yeah. actually, I'll let you do that, but I'll, I'll follow up after. So, uh, which of you Mayor, is going to speak? Mayor, there's a lot of people here today, and I think we were talking about time limits earlier. Um, I think it's only fair that everyone gets to speak tonight. I would suggest that we do a three-minute rule. We're not and, if, and if we're making the motion for a three-minute rule,
that whole oh, limiting your time to speak. Of water. That's abhorrent to democracy, okay? You all get to speak as long as you want, as many times as you want tonight. This is an existential problem for this town. I made a motion. There's a motion on the table. I'm not able to speak. This is the most important issue. I think it's obvious that this is an important issue. Right? Councilman Wu has the floor. I recognize him. I didn't have a motion on the floor and second. Well, Councilman Wu has the floor. I didn't hear anything. There's a motion. This is the most important issue that our town has faced in decades. That's fine. Everybody will get it. We're here at Upper School for a reason. So the reason there's been flyers distributed throughout the town, why would we stymie what? free speech? What we're going to do, what we're going to do, we're going to, do, we, we're going to have the presentation. People want to make comments and make questions. People want to ask questions and make their comments. Council as a whole, there's a motion and a second to make three minutes. Council Parsons, Luke. There is a motion and a second on the floor. I mean, my comments, absolutely no. As you can see, I was stopped in the middle of my comments. Council Ms. Wu, it's either yes or no. Thank you. Song? Yes. Savari? Yes. Park? Yes. Aversa? Come on! Oh. So, to prove every point in my speech, you just saw it happen, folks. Your democracy has now been limited to five minutes. Let the people decide for themselves. I'm sorry, they're limiting your speech to three minutes. I don't plan on enforcing that, folks. You speak as long as you want, okay? That's my view. That's okay. So, the order, I see you standing there, man, but the way this works, you, you have to sit down. Okay, the, the way this works is, let our, let our, um, hold on a second, let our presentation happen, we will take questions from the floor after, okay? I saw you, ma'am, standing there, but I can't take your questions right now, we're not open to the public. We're not open to the public, ma'am. This is not the way you said this was going to be, you sent down emails and letters. I didn't send out anything, they did. It a dignified meeting. This okay, you have to sit down. You, 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 you can raise your hand later and you get your three minutes from Mr. Aversa. Um, if that's what he wants to do. I'm not sure that's a good one. Okay, so uh, who's going to speak from our team? All right, so Mr. Wunsch, who um, uh, has no affordable housing experience as a lawyer, led the dream team here in negotiations. So Mr. Wunsch, the floor is yours. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, no, the way it works, folks, I preside over the meeting. You sit over there and you give your presentation. Or you go over there. You are a horse's ass. And now, there's something completely different. Good evening, neighbors. Thank you for choosing to spend some time with us to chat about affordable housing and how it affects us. And when I say us, that includes me. As some of you may not know, I am a resident of this great town, and hence my initial greeting to you all, because you are all my neighbors. If I had a podium, this would be easy. But in January of 2019, I was honored to be chosen by this great council to serve as the interim borough attorney. One of the pressing matters handed to me was affordable housing. We were in a tough situation with a trial date rapidly approaching. I spoke with the new council and sought their advice. It was agreed that the litigation path followed by our predecessors no longer seemed to work. With a mandate from the council, I assembled our professionals that had been on this file since at least 2018 and were hired by the preceding council. Good people, we could not have been more fortunate. I have a dream team of professionals to work with, and I thank the preceding council for their choices. Before I introduce you, them to you, I wish to detail what we hope to achieve tonight. One, separate facts.